Chapter 14. Ambushed. Cass lets out a furious scream and charges McKee, clearly intent on tearing his head off and taking on the entire Hunter army, single-handed. Cass, Gabriel, stop her before she gets herself killed. With an exceptional display of speed and strength, Gabriel tackles Cass, holding her down as she howls in defiance. I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna kill all of them. Parker, help me get her inside. Together, you drag, kicking, screaming back into the warehouse and slam the door behind you. Inside, Gabriel wrestles Cass to the ground, where screams are heard all bouncing off the walls. Let me go. No, you have to calm down first. They killed Seth! They killed Seth! Gently cup her face. As she struggles and snarls, you step in front of her carefully place your hands on her cheeks, forcing her to look only at you. Cass, Cass, focus on me. Seth's dead. Those bastards. I know. I know. I know you're in pain, and so am I, but attacking the entire army by yourself is throwing away your life. I don't care. I don't. But I do. Don't you see, Cass? Seth died to protect my mom and the Coven and you. If you get yourself killed, then his death will be in vain. But Cass is beyond reason as she continues to scream and fight against Gabriel's iron grip. She had a worried glance at your mother. Parker, go help your mom. I'll do what I can here. Okay. With a last pain look at Cash, you rush to your mom, who's struggling frantically to free herself from the chains looped tightly around her chest. I have to calm her down. You lay your hand on her shoulders, take a deep, centering breath, and call in your calming ability, visualizing the bright energy flowing through you and in your mom. Couldn't have done this for Cass. Just breathe. Instantly, her heartbeat calms, and in a moment, the tension drains from her body, and she relaxes back into the chair. Okay, let's get you out of her. Grab onto the chains, but when you feel a twinge of silver burn against your skin, you quickly snatch your hands away. Of course they're made of silver. They counted on us wasting our time dealing with this, but... They didn't count on me being immune. Do you even know what I'm more helpful than ever. Break them. Smiling, you grab the chains again and pull, your muscles trembling as the metal links strain, bend, and then snap apart. You toss them to the floor with a loud clatter. Finally freed, your mom yanks off the gag and pulls you into her arms. Parker! Mom, what happened? They caught us outside the camp. Parker, it's a trap. They use Seth's blood to mask their scent. There's an army of them hiding in the woods. So we're surrounded. As soon as your team infiltrates the camp, they're going to close ranks and trap everyone inside. It's going to be a slaughter. We have to warn them. Mom, I have to go. We'll bring you as far as the tree line, but you need to get out of here and run to town. No way am I running. I'm staying right here and destroying this warehouse. After all those bastards have done to you and to, to Seth, I... I want some... God... Damn payback. The white-hot rage on your mother's face is both scary and exhilarating. You throw your arms around her for a tight hug. I love you, Mom. I love you now. T go. Gabriel and Cass, at your side, you burst out of the warehouse to screams of pain, sight of your coven mates waging a ferocious battle against the hunter troops. And though the vampires move like bolts of lightning, the hunter's superior numbers and regimented movements make them terrifyingly even matched. Those are military tactics they're using. They've been training for this. A common elder bursts through the ranks of hunters like a whirlwind, ripping off limbs, tearing out spines with terrifying ferocity. Get back, weaklings. For a moment, you think the vampires might have a chance, but as the elder severs another head, a soldier emerges from the chaos, geared out to head to toe in some new kind of armor. 
about trying that on me, blood sucker. It will be my pleasure to relieve you of your vital organs, human. Let's start with your heart. The Elder drives his fist into the Hunter's chest, expecting the blow to crush his ribcage. Instead, the Elder stumbles back, screaming and clutching his hand as it sizzles like meat on an open flame. That armor he's wearing, it's made of silver. Heart singing, you look out across the battlefield and see even more of the formidable silver-clad warriors cutting swaths through the weakened vampire defenses. They look like some kind of Hunter Special Forces. Linux must have rolled them out knowing we'd be coming. How do we beat that? We don't. Right now our only chance is to take out as many as possible and regroup at the Nexus. Suddenly a terrified scream pulls your attention and you turn to see one of the vampires on the ground writhing in pain as she clutches at the silver arrow embedded in her leg. A hunter looms over, aiming a crossbow directly at her heart, but the hunter's back is to you. The hunter won't see me coming. I can save her. I'm going to sense the hunter's intentions. What the hell is this box? Seriously. Again, look at the boxes. They're weird. You grab the hunter's arm and snap. You're outside your body, watching as she pulls out a silver knife. Get your filthy hands off of me. And plunges it into your shoulder. And snap. You're back in the present. Get your filthy... Shut up. And before she can reach for her weapon, you tear her arm off, watching with grim satisfaction as she drops to the ground, blood pouring from the open wound. Suddenly, something slams you from behind. You stumble face first in the dirt. A set of shackle clamps down around your wrists as a malevolent voice cackles in your ear. Gotcha! Despite the restraints, you flip over to face your attacker and your stomach howls to find one of the silver-clad hunters looming over you. Time to die! She pins you, and though you struggle, her armor gives her the advantage. Increasing her strength as it saps your own, she raises a stake above your heart. I'm not going down without a fight. I'm gonna... Headbutt her while she's wearing a silver helm. That sounds great. Let's kick! With a scream of defiance, you bend your knee and slam your heels into her ribs. But instead of pushing her back, the silver coating of her chest plate deflects the blow entirely and sends a jolt of pain coursing through your body. Somehow the rubber on your shoes just doesn't work. Vampire tricks aren't going to help you. Hunters have the edge now, and you bloodsuckers are going down. She slams you back in the ground and raises the stake, but you refuse to flinch, stoically waiting for it to slam into your heart. Get the hell away from her. Gabriel barrels into the hunter, knocking her back. With a fierce growl, he whacks the stake out of the hunter's hand. Huh? And smashes his fist into the side of the hunter's head. The hunter slumps to the ground, unconscious, a fist-sized dent gouged in her helmet. Gabriel scrambles to your side and rips away your shackles. Are you okay? Did she hurt you? I'm... I'm fine. But you're not fine. The rush of adrenaline is making you dizzy. You shake uncontrollably as your mind replaces the previous few moments. Moments you thought would be your last. I have to give him an epic kiss. You grab his face with both hands and crash your lips to his in a hard, desperate, life-affirming kiss. You pull away and almost laugh at a mix of shock and desire on his face. What, never been kissed before? Not like that, no. Well, I've never been that close to death before. Thanks, by the way. You literally died. I'll <laughs> 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 always be there for you, Parker. Now, let's get... And just then, you spot a hunter stalking towards the laboratory, waving his arms at the team soldiers, still fighting off your coven mates. Hey! Over here! I think there's a group of them in the lab! If he goes in there, he's gonna find Elder Rain and the others setting charges. I have to stop him before he gets the attention of the other hunters. I'll... Goad him into attacking me, distract an ambush, or use my calming ability. You close your eyes, calling the soothing power of your calming ability, letting the bright energy flow through you in tranquil waves, and then you send the power flowing into him. 
Instantly, his heartbeat calms, his tense shoulders relax. With a confused shrug, he drops his crossbow and wanders away into the woods. Why don't you do this with all the rest of them? Uh, where's he going? To frolic with nature. He's a hippie now. As long as it's not the lab, who cares? All at once, the ground shakes. Gabriel throws himself over you as a shield. Bits of concrete and metal rain down, and when you turn to look at the lab, you find it's now a pile of smoldering rubble. They did it. They blew up the lab. And the warehouse. Ass comes skidding to a halt beside you, and despite the blood spattered in her clothes, you throw your arms slightly around her. Ass, you're okay. Of course I am. No time to celebrate, though. The sun's rising. We have to warn the elders or tell everyone to run. Spotting a nearby boulder, you jump to the top, cup your hands, and scream across the battlefield. Everyone's sun's coming. Fall back to the Nexus. But your position now makes you a target. Suddenly you're ducking a silver arrow whizzing through the air at your head. Shooter! Fire! You're still alive. New girl, unless you want to be a super hot pincushion, you gotta get the hell down from there. No, everyone needs to hear this. Vampires fall back to the ley lines. Head for the Nexus. As your coven mates exit the field in a blur, Gabriel pulls you into a triumphant hug. We did it. Everyone's retreating. Everyone but us. Let's get out of here. This party is officially blows. Wait, Mom, I have to find her. She's over there. Come on. You follow Gabriel through the camp, and when you spot your mother waiting at the edge of the trees, you run to her and sweep her in your arms. Mom. Oh my god, Parker. So many vampires were hurt. I thought I was afraid. I'm fine, but Mom, the sun's coming up. We have to get back to the Nexus. I'm ready. Let me just... Mom, you can't come with us. I hate to say it, but she's right. Terry, we're targets now. We, uh, where we are is the opposite of where you should be. Her name is Terry? Question mark. So what? What am I supposed to do? Go home? Yeah, have a nice tea, maybe a nap. The hunters might look for you there. Go to town, a shop, a cafe, whatever's open. They won't attack you in front of other humans. Parker, I don't want to leave you again. I don't want to leave you either, but the truth is you'll only slow us down. For a moment, you think she's going to protest, but finally she nods and pulls you in for a last desperate hug. I love you, kid. I love you too, Mom. Then, to your surprise, and there she pulls Gabriel and Cass into a hug. Keep her safe. You got it, Terry. Always, it's weird they're calling her on a first-name basis now. And with a final long, loving look, she turns and disappears into the trees. All right. Time to... Wait. Claire, what are you doing here? I was with the Elder Rain when she blew up the lab. I got away, but the hunters have her, and the rest of the team trapped behind the ruins. You don't even have to look at Gabriel and Cass to know what they're thinking. We're getting them out of there. Damn right we are. Let's circle around the back, find out what we're dealing with. Moving stealthily through the camp, you quickly locate the captive vampire surrounded by a heavy armed squad of hunters, led by none other than Lennox's two henchmen. Smith, Carter, you're on the lookout. You see anyone coming that's not one of ours? Shoot first, ask questions later. Percy, you're with me. We'll be keeping those filthy prisoners in line. You watch and whore as Jones prods a bruised and battered Lucas with the tip of a silver arrow. On your knees, bloodsucker. Enraged, Cass starts to rise from your hiding place, but you grab her arm and pull her back down. Hold on, those two are going to pay, I promise, but we can't just rush in there. We need a solid plan. Gabriel, you train with Elder Kaufman. What would he do? For a long moment, he studies the hunters, their movements, weapons, and you can almost see his mind working. He's targeted a spot in the enemy line and attack. Creating an opening for them. But first, we gotta find where most of them are. Sounds like a job for your heat detector thing, new girl. Where's the darkest concentration of red? There, to the right. 
Fangs bared, you burst out of the trees and charge the knot of hunters. Trick them with my ability of projection, use my assassin blow darts, or attack with a clement combat. Projection ability. You dive into the power of the ley lines, immediately your projection appears. With a twist of your wrist, you make it cut to the left, directly past the line of hunters. One of them's escaping, get her! A large group of hunters takes off in pursuit, leaving a hole in their defenses, where the captive vampires break through with a ferocious cry. You're not getting away that easy, freak! But while Jones focuses on the Elder, you're focused on her. As Jones aims her weapon, you pounce, tackling her to the ground, and before she can utter a word, you tear her head clean off her body. Did we at least see the head being torn from the body? You know, like a headless, like, you know, just remove the shoulders down, you know? Take that, you monster. Vampires! To the Nexus, run! But as you join the freed prisoners, breaking through the trees, McKee cuts you off, cornering you against the smoldering ruins of the lab. Not so fast. He raises his hand, and your body goes cold with fear when you see he's holding a sunbeam talisman. This is gonna hurt. You grit your teeth, brace for the pain, when suddenly Cass leaps in front of you and takes the entire blast directly in her chest. Surprise! Mickey hesitates a second, but a second is all you need. Lightning quick, you grab his throat and force him to his knees. This is for pick one. Seriously, pick one. It's a 33% chance. Cass, Mom, Seth. Well, Cass is fine, your mom is fine, and Seth is dead, so... You filthy, blood-sucking friend deserve... But you don't wait to hear the rest. You crush his throat with one merciless squeeze of your fingers. You let his body drop to the ground, watching him twitch and die with a sense of deep vindication. Then you remember... Cass... You scramble to her side and pull her into your lab. Cass, Cass, open your eyes. Please, tell me you got that guy. Is he dead? As a doornail. Good. It's the least that Snake deserves. After... She flinches, clutches her middle. Gingerly, you lift her shirt to find a ragged burn emblazoned across her stomach. Damn it, I told you not to do anything stupid. I'd do a thousand things stupid to save you, little girl. Yes, I could kiss you. Well then, don't leave me hanging. Your laugh comes out like a sob as you take hold of her chin, tilt her face to yours for a deep, desperate kiss. Now that's what I call a thank you. Gabriel appears through the haze of battle and crouches next to you. You okay, Cass? A little crispy, but I'll live. Good, because we gotta go. Everyone's free, but I just overheard the hunter comms. They're calling for backup. Good thing we took some hunters out of commission. You lessen the numbers available for... Uh, okay, backup. As fast as your exhausted bodies can carry you, the three of you escape into the woods where you join the other vampires fleeing for the Nexus, but behind you, the hunter reinforcements nip at your heels. Is a bunch of them to the right. Fire! Get down! The deadly twang of crossbows rings through the trees, followed by screams of pain as vampires are picked off by the relentless hunters. But that's not the only problem. Your eye catches the flicker of shadow on the ground, go or shadow, and it's beginning to lengthen and grow. Oh god, the sun's coming up too fast. But the shadow is much longer than it should be, and at the point where it emerges from your foot, it's starting to separate and move on its own. What the? Oh, brightness. Then that familiar thrum of power jolts your senses as another ability makes itself known. You gasp as the glowing symbol of the ley line flickers around the outline of your new entity running beside you. It's some kind of shadow ability. Something that creates a, a whole other me? One that can act independently? Y you mean like your projection? <laughs> <clears throat> The writer spared no expense on just, hey, can I copy your homework? But make it different. Just by a hair. 
Look, it's our final ability. You take a deep, steady breath, and once again, the power of the ley lines is flowing through your body. You shoot a quick glance at the ground and find your shadow has completely detached and is running fully formed beside you. It's waiting for me to give it orders. <laughs> I thought it acted independently. You glance over your shoulder and see a hunter gaining ground on a limping, exhausted George. My leg. I can't run. No so tough, no, huh? Yes, just another pops out from behind a tree directly in front of you. Shadow. Help George. In a blink, your shadow swerves and knocks George's attacker to the ground with a deadly black fist. Ugh, what the hell is this thing? Just as you turn to the hunter in front of you, he raises his crossbow. Die, freak. Uh, you first. You knock the weapon away and take him down with one sharp blow. Then, as silently as it manifested, your shadow diminishes and returns to your feet just as George pulls up beside you. Reese, thanks for the help, but what the hell was that? Oh, just my shadow. You're what? You hear a twang and pull George down in a split second before another volley of silver arrow zings over your head. No time to explain, run. But as you resume your headlong dash to the trees, you feel yourself start to smile. Sunlight may still be my weakness, but now it's also my secret weapon. Your superior vampire speed soon leaves the hunters in the dust, but the sun is harder to escape. As it rises higher in the sky, your coven mates begin to flag and fall. What's happening? The sun poison has ever hit me this hard before. It's gotta be the solstice. The sun is stronger in magnifying the effects of sun poisoning. You turn to warn Gabriel and Cass when right in front of you, another vampire tumbles to the ground. I can't. I can't go on. George, get back on your damn feet. You are not dying today. But, despite her angry tone, you can hear the terrified tremble in her voice. Nobody's dying today. Quick, grab anyone who looks like they're fading. Carry them if you have to. We're not leaving anyone behind. Encouraged by Gabriel's words, you band together in pairs, helping each other as you continue to run towards the Nexus. But the Souls to Sun is merciless. And though your moon shroud keeps you relatively safe, the others aren't so lucky. One by one, vampires start to stumble and fall and burn. It's too hard. I I don't think I can make it. Claire, don't stop. Come on, give me your hand. No, Lucas, get up. But even as he says it, you realize that Gabriel himself is barely able to stand on his feet. Parker, run. Get to the ley lines. I'll, I'll stay with him. No, we can carry him together. No one left behind, isn't that what you said? Now stop arguing, help me pull him to the, into the shade. Cass, help us. Cass? Cass's blank eyes are riveted on the injured and dying vampires all around you. She tilts her head like she's listening to something only she can hear before letting out an ear-splitting scream. I'm not simulating that. Suddenly a broil brilliant wall of light and color bursts across the treetop, followed by a sound like a sonic boom. I think... I think that's the ley line border. Cass raises her hands towards the light, and in one long pulling motion, reels them back in. And the ley line answers her call, rippling across the landscape to her like a shimmering tidal wave of power. You duck as the visible energy of the ley line passes over you, whipping wind around your face as it envelops everything in its shimmering, protective embrace. Then, between one blink and the next, the light is gone, but now every vampire is rising. What the... I feel better. We're not safe yet. Let's go. Back to the Nexus. You grab hold of the shell-shocked cast, and along with Gabriel, you help the others to their feet and make the final desperate run for home. Physically and emotionally expand you, yet your infiltration group stumbles back into the Nexus, where you find a story in Lewin in the tribal tribunal chamber, directing triage efforts for many of the wounded. There you are! We thought we... you were lost! No, but we've got a lot of injured with us. We have beds set up in the corner, and by the looks of you, you should probably take a breather yourselves. 
We're fine. How how many survivors? Less than we'd hoped. We lost a lot of people. What the hell do we do now? That seems to be the question on everyone's mind as the crowd stills to hear what the coven leaders have to say. Lewin looks around at the wounded and then addresses the covens. We do the only thing we can. We wait until nightfall. Vampires don't hide from the enemy. No one's hiding. We're biding our time while we recover. When the sun sets, we'll resume the battle. But what if they attack the Nexus? Everyone's injured. We're sitting ducks. There's no evidence they've discovered the location of the Nexus. We're safe here until the sun goes down. Are you sure they didn't follow us here? Are you saying you couldn't outrun the humans? Hey, we almost got killed out there. Enough, no arguments. Whether the humans know our location or not, we have no other choice. Because of the solstice, everyone's healing slower than normal. Waiting here is our only option. Where are the emergency blood supplies? Feeding will speed up the healing process. The story and Lewin exchange a brief, almost embarrassed look, then Lewin clears his throat. Unfortunately, they've already been depleted. We'll have to make do with the time and rest. And unlike last time, I can't give them my blood. Fearful whispers ripple through the crowd, and you turn your friends with a worried sigh, only to notice one isn't there. Gabriel, where's Cass? I don't know. She was here a minute ago. Was the sense of dread? You search the crowd and find Cass standing alone in a corner with a desolate expir expiration. Cass, what is it? Did something happen? I should have known. I should have known Seth wasn't ready. I should have known he was in danger the minute we arrived. He died because I wasn't there to save him. In a storm of fury and self-destruction, he slams her fist into the wall with an anguished cry, sending shards of stone flying. I practically put that stake in his heart myself. I have to calm her down before she hurts herself. You slide your hands, gently up her arms, tap into that bright energy of your calming ability, but before you can set it flowing through her, she pushes your hands away and bolts through the door. Don't touch me. Just leave me the hell alone. Yes. You take off after her, aware of the Gabriel's right behind you as you chase Cass through the twisted subterranean halls. Gabriel, we have to stop her before she goes outside. Way ahead of you. With a wild burst of speed, he cuts her off and corners her against a wall. Out of my way, golden boy. Cass snarls and barely controlled rage in her eyes is terrifying. You look to Gabriel, wondering if he's feeling the same thing. We can't leave her alone. Not when she's like this. Cass, you need to let me help you. Let us help you. Work with Gabriel to calm her down. Time into it. And Gabriel pull the struggling, screaming cast into a nearby room. Get your hands off of me. Let me go, damn it. No. But Cass's grief fueled rage spirals even more out of control. With primal scream, she flips over a table and slams her fist against the wall. Let me out of here. Leave me alone. Cass, stop. We're trying to help you. Help me. Taking me prisoner is helping me? Grabs a chair, smashes it against the door before Gabriel grabs hold of her again. Suddenly you realize that raging out is exactly what she needs. That's it. Let it go. Here, break another chair. The only thing I'm gonna break is Aldahar. Ass breaks uh, Gabriel's hold and lunges at him, tearing his shirt and slamming her fist against his chest with wild, uncontrolled swings. Cast. I have to get in between them. In one lightning quick motion, you push Cass back and plant yourself firmly in front of Gabriel. Cass, stop. But her rage is too blinding. She continues to fight, grabbing at your shirt, shaking hard. She continues to scream at the top of her lungs. Leave me alone. Leave me the hell alone. In a blink, Gabriel is behind her, pinning her arms back. Let me go. 
No, not until you talk about Seth. Seth's dead. Seth's dead and it's my fault. He trusted me. I failed him. Just like I failed everyone I... Everyone I love. And just like that, her screams turn into deep, gulping sobs. And she drops to the floor in a puddle of misery. I'm sick of it. Sick of being a failure, of fighting, of everything being so hard. Heartbreaking, you lower yourself to the floor in front of her, pitching your voice low and steady and calming. Yes, look at me. With a hiccuping sob, she swipes her sleeve across her face. Get away from me, new girl, before I fail you too. I know you don't want to hear this right now, but I get what you're going through. No, you don't. I do. I feel like I failed Seth too. Maybe if we'd gotten there sooner or if, if I'd been a little faster, I could have saved him. But at the end of the day, the only people responsible for his death are the hunters. Not you, not me. The hunters. But he never would have been in that camp in the first place if I hadn't have convinced him it was some big, bad vampire. And now he's gone, and, and I gotta live with the decision for the rest of my life. I've lost so many people, new girl. You have no idea what that's like. I do. He barely clears his throat, hunkers down beside you, his expression familiarly wistful. He's thinking about his grandmother. I know exactly what that's like. Grief, loss, guilt. That feeling that if you'd just said or done something different, things wouldn't have turned out the way they did. But all that thinking isn't going to bring Seth back. For me, it helps to remember the people I've lost for the way they lived, their, their lives, not the way they died. Seth was just a kid. He didn't get that much of life. Maybe not a long life, but one that was full and happy. That's all because of you. It was? Cast. You weren't just Seth's mentor. He, you were his hero. You stood up for him, taught him everything he knew. It's what gave him the confidence to go on that mission in the first place. Knowing that's what Cass Harlow would have done. Which is exactly what got him killed. Stupid kid. Yes, everyone here is alive because Seth had the courage to make the ultimate sacrifice. Courage you gave him. Seth believed in himself because you believed in him. So you see, you didn't fail him. You made him what he was. Big, bad, vampire hero. Just like you. His heartfelt sincerity takes Cash by surprise, and for a moment she stares at him, eyes wide, unblinking, and then shakes her head and barks a laugh. Should have gotten that on tape. Nobody's gonna believe in me. I stand by what I said. Yeah, you say that now, but... She takes a deep breath and looks away, her emotions still so raw she can't meet his eyes, and then she nudges his shoulder. Thanks, golden boy. I guess... I guess you're not a total jerk after all. But you still are a dork. Mm, guilty. You let a short, relieved laugh and take his hand and then hers. Who laces her fingers tightly into yours and pulls them against her chest. Did any of this help? Well, clearly she's not a rage monster anymore, so yes. I guess I do feel less homicidal, but... You know I'm not much of a sharer, especially when Gabe or, or Golden Boy's in the picture. But I appreciate you guys sticking around. Nobody ever cared enough to put up with me before. It means a lot. So, finally willing to admit that you're my, uh, that you're friends? Hey, let's not get crazy, okay? In the corner of her eye, she looks at Gabriel's hand wrapped tightly around yours. The fact that anywhere you go, Aldahar will always be tagging along, maybe it doesn't sound so bad anymore. Aw, oh, kiss them both. You have a laugh, lean in, brush a soft kiss against her cheek, then turn and do the same to Gabriel. I'm glad you agree. Because you two mean everything to me, and this. You hold up your linked hands and smile. This is forever. And that's a mighty long time. Uh, but somehow, still not long enough with you, new girl. 
I guess we should get back to the others now. In a minute. Yeah, let's just sit here for a while. Yo, he even exhausted sigh and leaned back against the wall, content for the moment to sit in silence and bask in the comforting presence of the two people you love most in the world. Later, you find a quiet corner to sit back and wait out the day. Suddenly, a Gabriel clears his throat. We, we found a quiet corner after we were just in one. Maybe we should finally talk about the miracle in the room. And by miracle, I mean you, Cass. Don't you mean menace? No, I'm talking about how you literally move the boundaries of the ley lines. Um, I don't actually know. Like, when I moved the trees, it just happened, but this time it was a hundred times more powerful. But what I really remember thinking is you were going to die, and I knew that no matter what it cost me, I had to save you. No matter what it cost you. Cass, you promised you weren't going to sacrifice yourself for me. Both of you did. Oh, you actually thought we'd listen to that? What Cass means is, Barker, as long as we're breathing, we're going to do everything it takes to keep you safe, and you're just going to have to accept it. With an annoyed snort, Cass leans back against the wall and rolls her eyes. Golden boy, always outdoing me with pretty words, but yeah, what he said. I want to take both her hands. You lace your fingers with theirs, pull your united hand snug against your chest. I guess I don't blame you. I do the same, but don't you dare do it again, either of you. No promises. Come on, Parker, you know us better than uh, that by now. Suddenly the stone floor trembles seconds before you hear a loud crash. Gabriel and Cass dive in front of you, protectively, looking around for the source of the sound. What the hell? You hear panicked shouts from the hall, scramble to your feet just as Bridget bursts through the door, terrified and covered in dust. The hunters, they blasted through the wall of the tribunal chamber. We're being invaded! You bolt down the hall to the tribunal chamber. The sounds of fighting grow louder, the ground rumbling beneath your feet. You slam through the doors, a skid to a halt, trying to make sense of the devastation before you smash furniture, hunks of debris everywhere. You barely recovered coven mates screaming as they die for cover. They're coming for us! Run! Unit 1, take the tunnels. Shut down all avenues of escape. Unit 2, neutralize the wounded. Take no prisoners. Move, move, move! There. An ear-shattering boom and you duck the shards of... Rock whiz past your head. The room darkens, and though a new rift in the wall, something large and vaguely human shaped pushes its way inside. What the? Did that thing punch through solid stone? Horrified, you watch the enormous creature lumber into the chamber. It snatches up one of the fleeing vampires with a snarl, tears his head off with its teeth. Holy. It swipes another vampire, slamming him across the room, and with a step it takes, the thing grows larger and more mishappen. Its skin turns a pale, sickly gray, dark vein spider across its malformed body. What the hell is it? The creature steps into a shaft of light, and through the dust you look into its blackening eyes and realize... What ungodly, bloody experiment... Did Lennox do on himself? Hold it. Oh my god, it's Lennox. Yeah, no, I'm sticking with what the hell did he do. <laughs> Serious. Anyway, without further ado, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down description. Plenty of things to do. Check out, whatnot. And also consider supporting. There's also the join and thanks feature on the channel. Without further ado. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, WTF. That's about the best way to put it. So aside from that, um, one, I'm just going to say the following. If you didn't pick the diamond choice to, I guess, go and stop or cast from being a rage monster, you would have still had the moment where you, you know, bonded versus the moment you bonded while doing her diamond choice, which is a bit redundant if you think about it. So, uh, yeah. Imagine writing taking both things into account you know like if the diamond choice was selected 
it just goes, you know, you continue to sit in the room, you link each other's hands, you sit there and talk, I don't know, something, anything. And then if you didn't take the diamond choice, then it cuts to where you both link your hands and, you know, she calmed on her own or something. I don't know. Um, I, I don't, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. As a person who's played Romance Club, which if you haven't checked it out, feel free to check out some of the videos on my channel to see the literal difference, which is like decisions like this diamond choices and whatnot, can be literally and figuratively the, the the life and death between losing a character or whatnot. Someone who may or may not be important in that in that app. So, um, you know, they have many books and many things like that are, are choices that you either have to make or not. And, you know, you'll lose love, you'll lose someone literally to death, yada yada. I don't understand how Detroit Becomes Human came out how many years ago. And still a book slash app thing like choices can't do something as simple as that. Like, as a person who's dabbled with Unreal Engine and Unity and yada yada, I, I don't understand how if I flick on a switch on or off, the, the, the choices writers can't just do one simple thing. Anyway... It just confuses me because it makes good books, because this is like one of the few good books we currently have. It just makes good books bad, in my opinion. I know, maybe I'm nitpicky. Let me know in the comments section below if you agree with me, but I, I just, it, it kind of irks me, is about the best way to put it. It really does. Because um, there could be time and effort also spent on other things, making things even better than they already could be, if you understand what I'm saying. So, I don't know. I, I guess there's a reason why a bunch of writers have left the company and we're stuck with whatever we're left with right now. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you all later. Bye.